There are many places like Zerot, devastated but liberated, meaning Hamas terrorists have been driven out from there, but that was just phase one. Phase two of Israel's operation could be trickier. That could be a ground invasion. There's a lot of talk about this possibility, a ground invasion. But what exactly does it mean? And how would such an operation unfold? So far, Israel has been striking Gaza from the skies with rockets and missiles. But a ground offensive would involve soldiers. Israeli soldiers would enter Gaza and fight. And it won't be a first. They've done it before. The last Israeli ground operation was in the year 2014. Hamas launched a volley of rockets into Israel. Israel responded with a ground invasion, 2014. The whole thing lasted around 19 days. More than 2,000 Palestinians were killed. Israel lost 73 citizens. Before that, in 2008, there was another ground invasion, Operation Cast Leap. This invasion lasted around two weeks. More than 1,400 Palestinians were killed. And Israeli casualties? Nine deaths. And there's a reason why I'm highlighting the death tolls. It shows that past invasions were militarily viable. Yes, Israel lost soldiers both times, but they inflicted much more damage on Hamas. So could there be a repeat? And if so, how would it play out? Before any invasion, Israel will have to ensure two things. Number one, outside support. The US has deployed its aircraft carrier to the region. They're also sending fighter jets. And that's like an insurance for Israel. Insurance against Iran and Hezbollah, this kind of American military support. And number two is softening Hamas defenses. And again, they've done it in the past. Israel uses land-based artillery to strike Hamas targets. Also gunboats to strike from the sea. Once the defences have been levelled, the troops enter. Let's pull up the map now. Israel has usually preferred these routes to enter Gaza. Eretz crossing in the north. Buriej, south of Gaza city. And the Philadelphia route in the south. All three have been used in the past, but once inside, once you're inside the Gaza Strip, the situation gets trickier. Gaza is a concrete jungle. It's one of the most densely populated areas in the world, which means there is going to be urban warfare. There are plenty of places for Hamas to take cover in Gaza. Also more chances to lay traps because it's so densely populated and built. So if Israel invades, it could face a long and drawn out struggle, not to mention casualties. Because Hamas now has more sophisticated weapons like anti-tank missiles and armed drones. So an invasion could be costly for Israel. Having said that, Israel's military is world class. They have experience operating in urban centers in Gaza and the West Bank. They've done all of it before. They're also familiar with Hamas tactics. So there is no doubt about the outcome. If Israel wants, it can occupy Gaza. So why hasn't Netanyahu, Netanyahu gone ahead? Why hasn't he done it yet? Well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, he's not big on ground invasions. The Prime Minister of Israel, the current Prime Minister, prefers airstrikes and drone attacks. And reason number two, what comes after the invasion? Let's assume that Israel goes into Gaza, they destroy the Hamas leadership, they kill all the terrorists, but what do they do next? Occupying Gaza will not be easy. And Israel did control this region starting in 1967, but by 2005, they pulled out. It simply wasn't viable anymore. The other option is to leave after decimating Gaza. Go do your job and then exit. But again, there's a risk. What if someone worse emerges in Hamas's place? Someone who decides to take revenge? So Netanyahu faces a tough call right now. He has to consider a number of factors and risks. And some of these factors are conflicting, like public sentiment. Across Israel, there is demand for revenge today, and chances are airstrikes alone cannot satisfy that. But if Israeli soldiers die in Gaza in a ground offensive, the same sentiment could turn, and Netanyahu would face further criticism. His comments to US President Joe Biden signal this dilemma. He reportedly told Biden that he doesn't have an option, that he cannot show weakness at this point. And what was Biden's reply? Nothing much. Reports say he did not try to stop Netanyahu. So ground invasion or not, Israel's army is prepared for a long war. Their army chief has warned of difficult days ahead. This is what he said. Therefore, this is a time for war, not for an operation, not for a round, time for war. And within this war, the IDF is strong, will act with strength and will win and achieve its needed goals. For us, looking forward, it is expected that there will be days of long, complex fighting.
Politics too will play on Netanyahu's mind. He's calling for a unity wartime government. What does that mean? A government that includes the ruling party and the opposition. It's supposed to signal national unity. And Netanyahu's coalition has agreed to form such a government. If he can get them to sign off on the invasion, it would be more insurance. And talks, we are told, are happening behind the scenes. We should have an answer in the next few days, both on the government and the invasion.